Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So earlier in the year, I did a video on this protest that was occurring at a MacBook production facility in China at a place called Quana, and it appears that it's not just happening there, it's happening at many different locations. I wanted to show you what was going on, talk about it a little bit, and go over it. So this is not, not great. It says that employees were pushing past guards they outnumbered, and some guards were pummeling people to the ground with sticks, and in addition, it looks like they were also kicking them, so... Yeah, see this guy over here? He was, it looked like from, yeah, kick, 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 because being on the ground is not enough. You must also be kicked. Maybe it's an approach to try once we move the business over here to Texas. Maybe it'll be good for employee morale. You never know. But in all seriousness, look, do you have to kick the people once they are on the ground? Once they are already lying on the ground and you have a stick, is it necessary that you kick them in the abdomen? The protest started overnight over unpaid wages and fears of spreading infection, according to the witness, asked to remain anonymous for fear of repercussions. Now, my question is, are they protesting the COVID limitations and restrictions, or are they protesting the fact that they are working at all due to severe fear of COVID? Because the prior protests appear to be protests of the COVID restrictions, not protests like, how dare you make me work during COVID? In one video, irate workers surrounded a silent, downcast manager in a conference room to voice grievances and question their COVID test results. It wasn't clear when the meeting took place. I'm really scared about this place. We could all be COVID positive now, a male worker said. You are sending us to death, another person said. Okay, now we get an idea of what they're protesting. It's not protesting the restrictions, but rather they all appear to believe that COVID with a vaccine is scarier and more deadly than smallpox without one, which is genuinely surprising to me. And I wonder if this is something that's been culturally ingrained by the COVID zero policy that they've been pushing for the past several years and the very, very strong restrictions they put in place with, you know, this thing that's being put in the mind of the citizenry. Maybe it's something like they wouldn't have all of this in place if this wasn't very, very serious, so it must be very, very serious. Many among the vast workforce of more than 200,000 at iPhone City have been plunged into isolation, forced to subsist on Spartan meals and scrounge for medication. What does scrounge for medication mean, and what is a Spartan meal? Hi, Aria. It underscores how Xi Jinping's COVID zero policy, which relies on swift lockdowns to stamp out disease wherever it pops up, is increasingly weighing on the economy and throwing swaths of the global supply chain into disarray. My question is, is this about Xi's policy or the culture of fear he has inculcated into his citizens? The citizens do not appear to be protesting lockdowns, if this article is accurate. They appear to be mad at a lack of pay and afraid of getting COVID themselves. They appear to be afraid of getting COVID themselves to a much greater degree than CNN or MSNBC was in this country in 2020. Violence has erupted sporadically across co China over COVID restrictions. In May, hundreds of workers clashed with security personnel at Quanta Computer's factory in Shanghai after they were barred for months for contact with the outside world, while protests have emerged in lockdown areas of Guangdong, the southern manufacturing hub. This does seem to be the opposite of that though. Zhengzhou is the site of Apple's most critical production, churning out an estimated four in five of its latest generation handsets and the vast majority of its highest end iPhone 14 Pro units. Apple warned this month that shipments of its newest premium iPhones will be lower than previously expected, just ahead of the peak holiday season shopping. Again, this should teach a lesson that being this dependent on having all of your production done in China is going to screw you and that it may be time to start looking elsewhere where they do not have this level of authoritarian government. The sprawling compound is operated for weeks within a closed loop or a self-contained bubble that limits contact with the outside world. One note that I want to make, every time you hear the word closed loop being used, this is a nice way, in my opinion, to refer to slavery. You're not allowed to go out. These people get to say what you do, what you wait, when you when you can leave, where you can go. That's not a closed loop. That is slavery. It's just a nice way of describing it and screw that. The tension is that Beijing wants both COVID zero and full economic growth, he said. It's kind of impossible. And this is what drove me nuts with this entire kind of situation. Everything in life is a trade-off, and you must understand that it is a trade-off. It's not that you have all the benefits of one policy without any of the downsides of locking people away or telling people that you're not allowed to work that is going to have ripple effects throughout the world. Foxconn has begun offering $1,400 to any workers who choose to leave, an unusual decision intended to appease disgruntled new hires who played a central role in violent protests that rocked the world's largest iPhone factory. My question is, how does this work? Will more people not take this option if it's publicly known that getting violent equals a large severance pay? One factor behind the unrest is that workers found out they wouldn't receive higher wages they had been promised unless they stayed at the factory through March. 
The 10,000 won payment, which is, I believe, 1,400 US dollars, would compensate people unhappy with that restriction for their travel back home. A computer glitch also didn't help. Foxconn apologized Thursday for an input error that may have made it seem like some staff who were, pay were paid less than promised, adding that it would stand by contractual obligations. Why do these errors always result in people being paid less rather than more? Why? So, you know, for instance, with my audit that I had, at the end of it, I had a 0.11% error rate. That meant that I was collecting from customers as a total 0.11% less than I was supposed to during the period that I was audited. However, the other interesting thing about this error is many of the transactions they had flagged for me saying, why didn't you collect sales tax here, were actually for transactions where I had refunded the customer altogether. Yet I was reporting these as income. So the funny thing about my entire tax audit that I had is that in the end of the day, I'm actually going to be saving money because I was reporting income on my taxes that I had refunded customers for. So I had an error, but my error in one area resulted in under-reporting by 0.11%, yet in another area, it resulted in me over-reporting by like 5%. And one of the things I find interesting about these types of errors is they always seem to go in one direction. We have Apple team members on the ground at our supplier Foxconn facility, the U.S. company said in a statement. We are reviewing the situation and working closely with Foxconn to ensure their employees' concerns are addressed. Raise your hand if you believe Apple will make sure employee concerns are addressed. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not rushing to that one. Spartan Meals. On October 19th, it closed its worker cafeterias on orders from local authorities. This immediately led to problems. Foxconn simply didn't have the staff to prepare and deliver food boxes multiple times a day. So meals were mostly given out as workers left the factory with the intention that they'd eat in their dorm rooms. The cooked food often ran out, leaving many with only bread and boxed milk. Bruh. Okay, so you are going to tell people that they're not allowed to leave. And then after telling them that they can't leave, you are going to give them bread and boxed milk and you wonder why they're protesting. Okay, so that's what a Spartan meal is. Now, now we know. Bread and milk. Those who didn't go into the factory because they were sick or quarantined in their rooms at times didn't get anything. Anything referring to no food, according to people who were at the complex at the time. What the fuck? The quality of the food was poor, consisting of rice, shredded potato, and fried bean sprouts. Hey, that beats bread and milk. Zhang Wang, a 21-year-old who polished metal cases at the factory, says he got stuck in his dorm room without food for a day after being categorized as, as having had close contact with someone who had COVID. That night, he says he grew so hungry he went down to his building's entrance to the man that guards give him food. They were so afraid, he says, as if I was wielding a knife. Normal work environment, nothing out of the ordinary there. It's just how we do it at Rossum Repair Group. Hey, I don't see anything wrong there. <sighs> Jesus Christ. The daily COVID testing also proved to be flawed. As many as 20 workers' throat swabs were put into one tube to speed testing and lower costs. What the f***? So you have a highly contagious virus, and you have wet swabs that were shoved down people's throats, and you're going to have 20 of those swabs moving around in the same container. And I, gee, I... No surprise at all that you get more positive results than expected there. If the results came back positive, all the workers whose samples were in that one tube were put into isolation for further testing, and do remember that the people who were testing positive were not getting food. Are you fucking kidding me? In some dormitories, trash piled up for weeks because no one was allowed to leave the building. Sounds like the New York City garbage strategy. Maybe these people would feel more at home doing production in all the empty commercial real estate spaces in New York City. COVID-free workers, nicknamed colleagues who got COVID, sheep, because the word's pronunciation in Mandarin is the same as positive. The breaking point for many workers came on October 28th when Foxconn announced strict measures to enforce a tighter closed-loop system. Remember what closed-loop means? Slavery. The company announced Zhao to move into dormitories it had set up for workers in surrounding areas. Meanwhile, the situation in his own tiny room turned untenable. The restaurants in his village all closed. The price for a head of cabbage passed 31, almost 10 times the cost in Beijing. Hyperinflation in a closed-loop system and price gouging. Who would have guessed? It's almost like there are consequences to shitty authoritarian policy. With a growing number of people forced into isolation, rumors and misinformation started to spread. A video clip claiming that eight female workers died inside a dorm room went viral among workers and on Chinese social media, prompting Foxconn to issue a denial. Fact-checking organizations later determined that the rumors were untrue. 
This explains why people were afraid of getting COVID before and were commenting like they were being sent to their death. So if I scroll up, I'm really scared about this place. We could all be COVID positive now, a mail worker said. You are sending us to our death, another person said. The reason that these people all appear to be more afraid of COVID with a vaccine than people may have been without a vaccine to smallpox a long time ago, it appears to be because of these types of videos and misinformation being spread. The emoji for sheep was also used to represent positive cases on social media to evade censorship from Chinese social media platforms that were deleting posts related to tensions at iPhone City. There you go. All you people that keep asking, Lewis, what does your logo mean? What's the sheep in your logo mean? There you go. You have your answer. This also explains the fear. If China and Chinese social media platforms are going that far to try to censor people talking about COVID po being COVID positive, it would make sense to the people that were afraid of COVID that maybe the reason they're so afraid of it is because they are trying to censor it so much. So if you are trying to hide the fact that people are COVID positive so much, if COVID is not that big a deal, then why would you be going through such an effort to do it? You might be trying to go through all this effort to hide the fact that people are COVID positive if COVID positive is smallpox without a vaccine and something that's actually gonna kill everybody which goes ahead to demonstrate how this feedback loop works. More authoritarianism and censorship, more paranoia from the population, which leads to more authoritarian censorship, which leads to more, you know, aggravation, riots, and uh, protests among the population, which it just kind of goes in this horrible, horrible cycle, and I don't know how you get out of this. One way that I imagine you can get out of this is by moving your production to another country, which I imagine Apple is wishing they had done many, many years ago, but, you know, late is better than never. What do you think of this? This seems like an absolute, utter, insane mess. Again, we are now at the end of 2022. Uh, almost every workplace that I have been to at this point does not have a closed loop system. You have people working together, and if somebody gets COVID after getting two or three doses of a vaccine, they just treat it like a cold, stay home for a couple of days, and go back to work when they feel better, and everything appears to be kind of fine with that. Uh, as now, in China, I imagine when it comes to the ability to vaccinate your citizens, they do appear to be ever so slightly more on the authoritarian side than we are here in the United States when it comes to making people get these procedures and the, the consequences of not getting them. So I, I can't imagine being at a point where all of this stuff is still necessary. And part of what I wonder is if they say, okay, never mind, we're just going to loosen the restrictions now. I kind of wonder if part of the reason for keeping all these restrictions in place is if they take them away, then you kind of have to justify why they were in place earlier and that leading to a an awkward situation or scenario. Either way, this is a complete and utter mess. I genuinely feel bad for everybody involved. And again, I'm just going to take a wild guess here, but I, I have my doubts that somebody from Apple being on site is going to make sure every single one of these employees has their demands and their concerns addressed. Because a lot of this is not even stuff that's happening at the company level. It's the company trying to deal with the restrictions being put in place by the Chinese government. And I don't think an Apple employee is going to be able to have say in Chinese government policy to this degree. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that this is something that's just going to blow over? Or do you think that this is the kick in the ass that many American companies finally need to get their ass out of China and to find other places to produce their shit that are not insane? Very curious what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. By the way, this is Audio the Cat. He's very cute. And he shows up in my lap from time to time when I do a video. Say hi. Audio, say hi to the camera. Audio, say hi to the camera. Why are you looking at me for? He's shy. I'll see you on the next video. Bye now.